Hello and welcome to the short introduction to protein separation. The previous lecture has focused on recombinant protein expression in Escherichia coli. So when we express proteins in Escherichia coli, they are generally overexpressed and tend to accumulate in the host as inclusion bodies or as aggregates. Now, in order for this experiment to be successful or to be industrially scalable, these proteins need to be recovered and then resolve into their biologically active forms. For instance, an enzyme which is folded in the wrong configuration or incorrectly positioned will not be suitable for application to industrial purposes. So let's us look at how we separate proteins. Now upon expression of the protein into the, in the cell, for instance in Escherichia coli, the protein needs to be released from the cell. This can be achieved by the use of physical procedures such as sonication, which essentially disrupts the membrane and releases the protein into the culture medium or into the buffer. Alternatively, enzymes such as lysozyme can be used to degrade the cell wall and release these proteins into the culture media or into the buffer solution. Once the proteins are released into the culture media, they need to be separated from the background of proteins. So the cell essentially consists of a large number of other proteins which are involved in function of the cell. We need to separate these proteins from the cellular components. So how does one achieve this? Essentially, when one looks at a protein in terms of separation, we know that we can separate proteins based on their charge, which is their net charge of the amino acid sequences, or on the basis of their size. In addition to that, tagging is a very important procedure which can be carried out to separate proteins. So, proteins can be tagged to molecules such as histidine. So, we have a 6x histidine tag which can be fused to each protein during the process of gene construction. Alternatively, we can use tags such as glutathione S-transferase, GST, which will essentially label proteins for separation. So how this essentially works is once you have cultured your Escherichia coli, lysed the cells, the proteins are then centrifuged, suspended in buffer and separated using a column. So the column essentially works based on affinity. So an affinity based column will essentially consist of a matrix which will bind to the tag proteins only. So you have your tag protein which you diffuse through this column. So they will, they will diffuse by gravity or in some cases by the application of a suitable pressure. Upon dispersal through the column, the tag proteins will bind to the column matrix. So these tag proteins essentially remain sequestered in the column. The proteins which constitute the cellular components of Escherichia coli will flow through this column and can be discarded. Now, when one wants to release these proteins from the column matrix, you can apply a buffer which has a different charge and this charged buffer will essentially separate these proteins from the column and what you will end up with is your purified protein. Now, some researchers may require a protein which is cleaved from its tag. This can be achieved by usage of specific enzymes. For instance, the 6x histidine tag is fused to this protein via an enterokinase cleavage site. So this enterokinase cleavage site can be cleaved. Alternatively, enzymes such as tobacco H virus or TEV protease can be applied in conjunction with a tag and this TEV protease will specifically cleave this site and you'll end up with your pure purified protein. 
Now, when usage of enzymes such as enterokinase and TV protease, care should be taken to ensure that your protein does not contain this TV, TV protease restriction site within the amino acid sequence. This basically concludes the introduction to protein purification. Thank you for watching. Please complete your assignment at the end of this section. Thank you.